And now a few words from our most decorated Marine Corps General, Brigadier General Smedley D. Butler. War is a racket. It has always been. It is possibly the oldest, easily the most profitable, and surely the most vicious. It is the only one international in scope. It is the only one in which the profits are reckoned in dollars and the losses in lives. A racket is best described, I believe, as something that is not what it seems to the majority of the people. Only a small, inside group knows what it's all about. It is conducted for the benefit of the very few, at the expense of the very many. Out of war, a few people make huge fortunes. In World War I, a mere handful garnered the profits of the conflict. At least 21,000 new millionaires and billionaires were made in the United States during World War I. That many admitted there are huge blood gains in their income tax returns. How many other war millionaires falsified their income tax returns, no one knows. How many of these war millionaires shouldered a rifle? How many of them dug a trench? How many of them knew what it meant to go hungry in a rat-infested dugout? How many of them spent sleepless, frightened nights ducking shells and shrapnels and machine gun bullets? How many of them parried the bayonet thrust of an enemy? How many of them were wounded or killed in battle? Out of war, nations acquire additional territory if they are victorious. They just take it. This newly acquired territory is promptly exploited by the few. The self-same few who wrung dollars out of the blood of war. The general public shoulders the bill. And what is the bill? The bill renders a horrible accounting. Newly placed gravestones, mangled bodies, shattered minds, broken hearts and homes, economic instability, depression, and all of its attendant miseries, backbreaking taxation for generations and generations. Of course, for this loss, there would be compensating profits, fortunes would be made. Millions and billions of dollars would be piled up by a few. Munitions makers, shipbuilders, manufacturers, meat packers, speculators, they would all fare well. Yes, they are getting ready for another war. Why shouldn't they? It pays high dividends. And what does it profit the masses? What does it profit the men that are killed? What does it profit the men that are maimed? What does it profit their mothers and sisters and their wives and their sweethearts? What does it profit their children? What does it profit anyone except for the very few whom war means huge profits? It would have been far cheaper, and not to say safer, for the average American who pays the bills to stay out of foreign entanglements. For the very few, this racket, like bootlegging and other underworld rackets, brings fancy profits. But the cost of its operations is always transferred to the people who do not profit at all.